Welcome to Miracles in the Book of Acts with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our topic today is Miracles in Jerusalem. In last week's program, we followed Paul and his team to Miletus, where they met with the elders from Ephesus for the last time. Paul charged the elders to stay faithful to the word of God by saying, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. He admonished them to not shrink back from declaring the whole counsel of God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 27. The whole counsel of God is more than information. The whole counsel of God is knowing and doing the will of the Father. Jesus made it clear that the will of God is that believers move in power and authority. They are to know how to heal the sick and to raise the dead. Jesus paid for our salvation and our healing. Paul wanted the Ephesian elders to be sure that healing continued after his departure. Nothing is more corrupting to the gospel than teaching that the gospel saves, but it does not heal. All over the world, wherever the whole gospel is preached, people are being healed. Luke says, when Paul had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them. Acts chapter 20, verse 36. After Paul prayed with them, he continued on his journey to Jerusalem. Luke wrote, when he had departed from them, we set sail and came by a straight course to Kos, Acts chapter 21, verse 1. Kos was 40 miles south of Miletus, where the ship stopped for the night. Visiting Kos would have been particularly interesting to Dr. Luke because of the famous doctor who practiced medicine on the island of Kos. He wrote what has come to be called the Hippocratic Oath, all doctors are required to take this oath, saying that they promise they will do no harm to their patients. The next day, they sailed to Rhodes, and the following day to Patera. At Patera, they looked for a bigger ship that could sail in the open Mediterranean Sea and take them directly to the port of Tyre in modern-day Lebanon. It was the Phoenicians who discovered how to navigate by the stars, Celestial navigation made it possible to sail through the night as long as the stars were visible. After landing in Tyre, Luke says, Finding the disciples there, we stayed with them for seven days. Acts 21, verse 4. While there's no mention of Paul previously visiting the believers in Tyre, it is most likely he already knew about them. Paul had traveled between Antioch and Jerusalem many times, so we, he would have already visited the churches between those cities. It is important to note that prophetic voices began warning about trouble in Jerusalem. Through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go to the city, Acts 21, verse 4. Luke says, all the disciples and their wives and children accompanied them out of the city, and there on the beach we knelt down and prayed. Acts chapter 21, verse 5. The prayers of the church for Paul must have been a comfort to him. From Tyre, they sailed to modern-day Akko, where Paul met the local believers for another brief overnight stay. The next day, Paul sailed to Caesarea, where the Roman governors of Judea all lived. Paul and his team stayed with Philip, the evangelist. The first time we met Philip was in the book of Acts, was when he was chosen to feed the widows in Jerusalem. Then we followed Philip as he preached in Samaria, where people received the Holy Spirit and were healed. After that, Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch on the road to Gaza. And the last time we heard about Philip, was when he had been supernaturally transported to Caesarea. And now, 20 years later, he's still there. 
He had four unmarried daughters who were all described as prophets. They must have made Paul very happy. Paul wanted followers of Jesus to operate in no less than two of the spiritual gifts. He said, I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more, to prophesy. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 and 5. I have four married daughters, and they are all prophetic. Paul clearly approved of both men and women operating in the gift of prophecy. Prophecy is more than preaching. It is receiving a word from God about what he wants to do. According to Luke, Paul and his team stayed with Philip for many days. And while they were there, a prophet named Agabus came down from Jerusalem. Acts chapter 21, verse 10. This is the second time we meet Agabus in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 11, he prophesied that there would be a severe famine in Judea. and Paul helped Gentile believers collect food to give to the needy people in Judea. Paul never stopped raising funds for the believers in Judea. And one of his reasons for returning to Jerusalem was to give these funds to the elders to distribute to the poor. When Agabus showed up, Paul must have known he was about to be given another prophetic warning. Agabus took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, this is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him over into the hands of the Gentiles. Acts chapter 21, verse 11. Agabus is the third prophetic voice warning Paul about trouble in Jerusalem. The reaction of some was to beg Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But Paul was certain that he had an important task to do in the city that only he could do. Now looking back, we can see the purpose of this prophecy was not to stop Paul from going to Jerusalem, but rather to strengthen Paul for the task ahead of him and to stir up the church to pray more fervently for him. Eventually, the whole team traveled with Paul to Jerusalem, and Paul was gladly received by James and the church elders in Jerusalem. After greeting them, Paul related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. Acts chapter 21 and verse 19. Paul was full of joy and re- as he reported on his third journey to the West. More and greater miracles happened on this trip than on the previous two. Paul shared about the extraordinary miracles in Ephesus. People were healed by handkerchief. And the dead boy, he was raised back to life in Troas. What an exciting story to share. He shared how all the residents of Asia Minor had heard a clear presentation of the gospel, and many had become followers of Jesus. Luke says, and when the elders heard it, they glorified God, Acts chapter 21 and verse 20. Following this happy moment, the situation for Paul in Jerusalem became very dangerous. Without God's miraculous intervention, Paul would have been killed. He was accused of bringing Gentile followers of Jesus into the temple. And after that, false accusations against Paul began to mount, with him finally being accused of defiling the temple. And that accusation was grounds for killing him. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple. And at once the gates were shut, and they were seeking to kill him. Acts 21 And verse 31, the disturbance came to the attention of the tribune on duty. He ordered his soldiers to run into the mob that was trying to kill Paul. He arrested Paul and had the soldiers carry him because the mob was still trying to attack him, saying, away with him, away with him. And when they reached the safety of the stairs leading to the fortress of Antonio, Paul asked the tribune for permission to speak to the leaders. Paul knew that it was the most, he was the most qualified person to address the religious leaders in the temple. 
He was the highest educated Pharisee and held the highest rank among them. The tribune reluctantly gave permission to Paul to speak. And so he said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia, brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel according to the strict manner of our law, of our fathers, being zealous for God as you all are to this day. Acts 22, verse 3. He went on to say how he had persecuted followers of Jesus by binding and delivering to prison both men and women as the high priests and the council, the whole council of the elders can bear witness to me, he said. Acts 22 and verse 5. Then Paul shared about what happened to him as he approached the city of Damascus. About noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me. I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Acts 22, verse 6 through 8. Paul explained that the temple soldiers who were with him did see the light, but they did not understand what Jesus said to Paul. They ended up needing to lead Paul by the hand into Damascus because he was blinded by the great light. Paul was taken to the house of Judas, uh, who lived on Main Street in Damascus, or the street called Straight, as it's commonly known. Paul shared that God had sent a righteous man by the name of Ananias to give him a message and pray for his eyes to be healed, and they were. What a miracle. Ananias said, the God of our fathers appointed you, that's a prophetic word, to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a word, a voice from his mouth. Uh, you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. Acts 22, 14 and 15. Paul went on to share how God brought him back to Jerusalem three years later. And at that time, Paul was praying in the temple, and he fell into a trance, and Jesus appeared to him, saying to him these startling words, Make haste, get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. Acts 22 and verse 18. Paul knew he had unfinished business in the city. And now, 20 years later, he is sharing his personal story with the leaders in Jerusalem. He knew that God had brought him back to the city to speak to these leaders one last time. After Paul said these words, the people stopped listening. And they began to shout again, Away with such a fellow from the earth, he should not be allowed to live. And they were shouting and flinging off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air. Acts 22, 22 through 23. The situation, once again, had become very dangerous. If you've ever had a vision of a man like Paul did, do what he instructs you to do. Do it today. God will be with you and he will help you. If you are in a dangerous situation, I pray that God releases a miracle of protection for you, just like he did for Paul. Your miracle might come through an unlikely person, except his or her help. One time a friend of mine was arrested and put in prison. He was not happy about that. But later he found out that a plot against his life had been uncovered. And the police officers took him into prison for his own safety. And so it was that the tribune took Paul into the fortress for his protection and the protection of his soldiers. Next week, we'll discover what happened after Paul was taken into the fortress. Join us then as we continue studying Miracles in the Book of Acts. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. 
We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.